All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. One of the craziest things that happened over the racing weekend involved the NARC Sprint Cars at their opener over at the Silver Dollar Speedway during the Mini Gold Cup. So they had a pretty good car count on hand with 26 drivers, I believe, that signed in for the first race of the year. It was not supposed to be the first race of the year. They did have a rain out, and so technically this was their first race of the year and the first 410 race of the year in the state of California. So, uh, as you can tell by the red and the yellow on the board, uh, there was a lot of incidents in this race. The track was a little cowboy up, right? Uh, Silver Dollar Speedway was kind of in, in old-fashioned form over there. And it kind of threw these guys for a little bit uh, of a loop through the wrench in their plans. I'm not really sure what you want to say there. Uh, but a lot of crazy stuff happened in this main event. And I thought that I would talk about it here today because it was such a big storyline. And I was watching this race uh, on Flow. Uh, the replay is available on Flow right now. Uh, but we were sitting in the grandstands at the Red Bluff Outlaws watching it on the big screen there. And man, did this race feel like it took forever. 40 lap main event. And so we'll just start off here with the first yellow. The first yellow came out on lap number one as Andy Forsberg spun. In turn one, he started from the second position. So right off the bat, uh, we set the tone uh, pretty badly for this NARC main event as Forsberg spins in turn one on lap one. Then they go for a five-lap run, and there is uh, a caution on lap number six. Contact between Jarrett Sores and Caleb Montgomery in turns three and four. A little bit of nosewing damage to Montgomery's car, but they would both continue on and keep on racing. Two laps later, Tim Kading bikes up off of turn number four, and he hits the front stretch wall, ending his night in the Williams Motorsports number zero car. He got out of the car on the front straightaway. Too much damage to the front end, and TK was out. A lap later, Billy Aton is off the pace on the front straightaway, uh, slowing. It looks like he's going to make it through the infield. He does, but the caution had already come out because the leaders were coming up behind him. He does a little loop-de-loop -loop through the infield, comes back onto the racetrack, and heads over to the work area. Three laps later, there is the first red flag of the night. It's Max Mitri. Uh, he flips in turn number four in actually the exact same spot he had flipped at the previous night. Uh, the previous night was not a NARC race. It was a 410 race, but it was not a NARC-sanctioned event. So Mitri flips twice in one weekend, and it was the first flip of the night for the Mitri team uh, for Demo Mitri and Mitri Motorsports. It was a tough, tough night for those guys, as we will see here in just a moment. Lap number 12, so on the ensuing restart, Colmacito jumps the start, and so they retry it. Still going to count that as a caution flag. Four laps later, Caleb Henry spins off the track in turn number four, which definitely seemed like a place to that was a lot of incidents were taking place, whether it was a flip, whether it's a car flying off the racetrack. The track was pretty cowboy up. It was pretty rough. Uh, it wasn't nearly as, um, as heavy as the night before, but it was still pretty rough, and it threw these guys uh, all over the racetrack and made it entertaining to watch on flow. Now, lap number 17, a lap later, there's contact between Bud Kading, Ryan Robinson, and Justin Cox. And as Robinson is slowing, he's spinning, he's slowing, and he flips over and does a little bit of a Tommy tip over. While at the same time, Michael Vicino, Caden Steele, and Robbie Price all get collected trying to avoid that mayhem there. So a six car incident on lap number 17 resulting in a red flag. Lap 22, five laps later, Jason Bright spins off the track in turn number four. And then on the ensuing restart on the same lap of lap number 22, Bright once again gets together. It looked like with Andy Forsberg, and they both spin in turn number four. Now, the cameras did not get a good look at that one, but I would have to guess that there had to be some contact between those two that sent, I think, Bright was off the track and Forsberg was spun out actually on the racing surface. Three laps later, another red flag comes out for DJ Neto and Justin Sanders. Sanders is racing hard with Cole Macedo coming off a of turn number four. Uh, they get together a little bit. Sanders goes to the bottom. Meanwhile, Neto has a big run after the contact between Sanders and Macedo. DJ Neto sees some daylight open. He goes to the bottom. He's not clear right front or sorry, right rear over the left front. Him and Sanders both go big time in turn number one. Neto definitely getting the worst end of the deal, uh, but that would end both of their races. Neto had actually won the previous night at Silver Dollar Speedway. So definitely an up and down weekend for him. And for Mitri, his team, Max flips on lap 12 and Sanders flips on lap 25. So a tough weekend there, an expensive weekend for Mitri Motorsports. Lap 32, seven laps after that red flag, Ryan Robinson and Chase Johnson get together battling inside the top five. Chase Johnson, it looked like something broke before he hit the wall, uh, but then he goes into the wall on the front straightaway. 
and his race will come to an end after pretty significant contact into the outside wall. Lap number 30, uh, 35, so we're getting down to the end of this race. Sean Becker spins in turn number one on a restart. He was running in the third position at the time. And uh, as you'll see here in just a moment, Becker actually returns and gets into the top 10. Not many cars were left standing at the end of this race, as you can imagine. Then it looks like everything's over. We're going to have a five-lap run to the end, and we get our final stoppage of the race, a red flag for Ryan Robinson, who is in the lead, going down the backstretch on the final lap, drifts over the edge of the back straightaway, and catches the foam blocks that are right there along that backstretch wall that kind of protect it from the grandstands over there. And as soon as he hit those, uh, those barriers, there was no going back, and he went for a huge ride, easily the biggest flip of the night. And it happened to the race leader on the white flag lap. He was looking for his first ever NARC win. And unfortunately, uh, comes up about a half a track short there in a very scary incident. Luckily, he was able to walk away and uh, go back to the trailer. So the race would end on lap number 40 as Cole Nacido would take down the win. And he would leave the first race as the points leader with the King of the West or the NARC sprint cars, whatever you want to call it. I've heard so many different names. Uh, it's hard to keep track of all, but we'll go with NARC sprint cars. Cole Macedo got the win from the 12th position. Shane Galbeck would get back to second. Uh, he started 13th. Caden Steele started 14th. He finished in the third position. And then Dylan Bloomfield started 10th, got the fourth. Bud Cady, who got in an earlier incident in the race, got back to the fifth position. Tanner Carrick, his name was not on this board of, cra of crashes. He finished in the sixth position after starting in 17th. There's Sean Becker's name again, started 22nd, got to seventh, even with the spin out there late in the race. Uh, Nick Parker finished 8th from the 16th position. Your pole sitter, Justin Cox, was able to hang on and finish in ninth. And reading on Facebook, it sounded like he actually had a, a bruised rib or a cracked rib after one of those wrecks early on in the race. I think the one that was on um, the, the wreck, uh, where is it at here on the board? Uh, early on in the race, I can't remember, right here. Lap 17, after that wreck, it sounds like he had a, a rib issue or something. And he was just cruising around, hoping to make it to the finish line. And he would result in a ninth place finish. And then Gage Garcia round out the top 10. He started back in 23rd. So that's the top 10. And that is also the top 10 in the NARC points after race number one. So if you weren't keeping track, that was 10 cautions, three reds, and 19 drivers involved in some sort of on-track inter, uh, inter altercation, whatever you want to call it, uh, at that race at Silver Dollar Speedway. So a tough way to start the NARC season. An exciting one. If you're watching home on flow, you literally had no idea who was going to win all the way to the very end. It was a great battle between Chase Johnson, Cole Macedo, Ryan Robinson, Shane Golovic. There was a couple other guys that got up there in the mix as well inside the top five. But Cole Macedo would take down his second career win with the series. Now, they were supposed to be in action again this weekend coming up the Merced Speedway in Merced, California. But I read right before this video got started that uh, that race has been canceled due to a, uh, a bad weather situation that is coming up over the weekend. And so that's, uh, that's going to do it here today for this video involving the NARC sprint cars. My first video talking about NARC. Let me know down in the comment section below if you want me to cover this series a little bit more. I wasn't going to do a video, but once there was so much craziness that happened in one race, I felt like it was definitely worthy of a story to cover here on the channel. So let me know what you guys thought of that race down in the comment section below. Uh, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button. It is free. The like button is also free. Appreciate all your guys' support, and we'll see you back here on the next one.